In our special edition of The Beat here at John Jay College of Criminal Justice, one thing we didn't have in this mock trial courtroom today was any witnesses. And in any case that touches on the White House, there's always the question of whether the most important person in the country becomes a witness or gives an interview or testimony, and that is the president. Here is a look at that big issue. Presidents have wrestled with testifying under oath as far back as Thomas Jefferson who rebuffed Chief Justice John Marshall's 1807 subpoena to testify at Aaron Burr's trial. To comply with such calls would leave the nation without an executive branch, Jefferson wrote. Ronald Reagan initially fought testifying before a grand jury in the Iran-Contra affair and didn't do so until after he left office in 1990. Today's questioning was behind closed doors. Reagan was permitted to give video testimony rather than having to appear at the Washington trial. Gerald Ford testified in a major criminal case while president, but as the potential victim, not a subject. President Ford today testified as a defense witness at the request of Lynette Squeaky Fromm, the young woman charged with attempting to assassinate him in Sacramento. Jimmy Carter also testified on videotape twice in office, and Richard Nixon, whose term was cut short by an investigation, only actually testified after he left office. As for investigations involving conduct in the White House, George W. Bush did an interview with the FBI about the leaking of a CIA official's name, and Bill Clinton testified in the Whitewater inquiry. Bill Clinton, the first president ever subpoenaed to testify before a federal grand jury in office, will do so tomorrow. Clinton testified about his contact with Monica Lewinsky. Could you please tell the grand jury what that oath means to you for today's testimony. I have sworn an oath to tell the grand jury the truth, and that's what I intend to do. I engaged in conduct that was wrong. As president, Donald Trump has not been subpoenaed, but he did say he's willing to talk with Bob Mueller. Would you be willing to speak under oath to uh, give your version of One hundred percent. I didn't say under oath. So if Robert Mueller wanted to speak with you about that, you I would, would be, be glad to, to, to tell him exactly what I just told you. That was before Mueller indicted three of Trump's former aides. If you, President Trump does give an interview or testimony, he has far more experience than his predecessors. Trump has been personally subject to more litigation than any president in history. You bet your ass I'd approve it. Compared to his persona on stage, in depositions, Trump is less brash, more muted, and even conciliatory. I don't have my glasses. I mean, I, I am at a disadvantage because I didn't bring my glasses. This is such small writing. Your uh, daughter told me in her deposition that you don't email, and I observed that that's because you're a very smart person. Yes, we've figured that out. It took a lot of people a long time to figure that out. <laughs> when you say you think he would have gotten additional business, additional compared to what? Maybe compared to where he would, would have been without. Without what? Without, as you say, uh, my running for office. I think my running for office potentially would have helped him mm -hmm. as opposed to hurt him. Different presidents handle testimony different ways. I'm joined again by Michael Waldman, who is not only a lawyer, but was chief White House speechwriter for President Clinton uh, and had a front row seat to some of the ways investigations affected him. First of all, what happens when a president gets close to having to give testimony? Uh, it's a very big deal, obviously. You're under oath when you're the president or any person. You can't get by with bluster or spin or charm. The stakes are just much higher. And uh, the work of a White House can grind to a halt or at least uh, always have the eye on this sort of thing. And in President Clinton's case, he had to testify in the Paula Jones civil lawsuit. And that's where he got himself into so much trouble. And then he had to testify in front of a grand jury. And uh, th that was something that was m enormously anxiety producing for the entire system. You say the entire system. What was it like being in a White House under that ongoing criminal probe? Well, you know, w what wound up being quite effective was there was really a pretty rigid segregation between the people who were worrying about the criminal probe, the impeachment, and everybody else. And the rest of us, by and large, our job was to try to do the job uh, that the public expected, work on policy. When it's a mess, as it has been in this administration, is when people get into trouble. When a uh, passing conversation you have with someone in the hallway could lead you to have to hire a lawyer. 
Uh, and, and it, it seems as if this White House has had a really hard time understanding that these are real probes with real potential consequences, and people should not all be hanging around in a meeting trying to concoct fake statements and other things that we know have happened. What you say that, and it makes sense, and yet Donald Trump entered the White House with the least government experience of any president in history and the most lawsuit experience. He is, as, as we've shown, an experienced deponent. Which is so interesting because, of course, as we know, he occasionally, let's say, has some difficulty with the facts and the truth when he speaks in public. But by all accounts, as a witness under oath, he's actually been very careful. You haven't seen a lot of people saying, aha, see, look how he lied under oath in this case or that case or this case or that case, all of which suggests maybe he knows when he's lying in other circumstances. Um, he needs to remember that he's, uh, he's under oath and the consequences of perjury, even when you're the president, even when there are clouds about what is and isn't criminal conduct, are very severe. And you're saying court is the one place that has shown Donald Trump seems to know what he's doing, or at least know when he's lying. Uh, in all the things we know about him, uh, we haven't heard a lot of debunking of his testimony under these cases. I'm sure there's some, but a typical press conference has produced more facts uh, that are in dispute than a lot of these lawsuits. Michael Walden, thank you for sharing your experience with us. That does it for our very unusual show. I want to thank John Jay College of Criminal Justice at the City University of New York, all our guests, and the student jurors today. You've been watching The Beat on MSNBC. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.